Hey, Tom here. Welcome to my channel. Tom loves DIY. If you've looked around on my channel a little bit, you may have noticed that I make alcohol burners, stoves, pot stands, windscreens, all the stuff that you need to boil water on the trail using alcohol. I've got a bunch of varieties, one with a built-in pot stand that's pretty cool. This just snaps in place. You set your pot on top. It's optimal height. Got some made with uh, two bottoms of a squirt cheese can, top and bottom, various <laughs> designs, but one thing in common. They all have an inner cylinder that goes around here inside the burner ring. It goes down to the bottom, so it's about that tall, has some cutouts, and when you pour the fuel in here, comes down to the bottom, vaporizes, and goes out. So it's a double wall stove. Comes out burning nicely, beautiful blue flame. They all have that, and I thought, is that really necessary? Because I've seen some stoves that are just two pieces put together with some holes in it, basically. So I made a new stove. This one doesn't have the internal cylinder. I'm going to go in and show you the build. And then in a subsequent video, I'm going to show you the burn test. It's pretty impressive. Stick around. First thing I do is make a small hole that allows the compressed air that's inside to come out. Then I can take a good pair of shop scissors, puncture that, and cut my way around. It doesn't really matter if this is a nice, clean, accurate cut. There, got it. Then on the inside, there's this plastic sleeve, which usually can come right out. There we go. And, of course, some leftover squirt cheese. Throw that away. I need to get out plastic and rubber pieces in here. Get that done with a pair of pliers. I've got two pieces of wood, 32 millimeters approximately. Take the marker, set it here, rotate on both pieces, this one upside down and this one like so. Now I've got reference marks on both of them and I can use that to do my final cutout of these two pieces. Now I have the two pieces complete. Uh, you can make this top piece maybe 35 millimeters, but it'll be fine. When they go together, they'll be about like so. But they can't go together because they're the same diameter, and you need this one to fit inside the top one. So I use some sandpaper. First of all, just to clean it up, make sure that there's no sharp edges, and be really careful with this. This is thin metal. Then I take the sandpaper and go around the edges like so. That does two things. It removes some of the paint. You can see it's taking paint off. And it also tends to kind of curve this in just a little bit. Uh, there'll be one more step to make that work. The next step to get these two pieces to fit together is to take some kind of a metal cylindrical thing, could be a piece of pipe, this is a cable ferrule compression fitting, and take this and rub it around like so. Just give it a little bit of constant smooth pressure. Got to go around a couple of times, and that will tend to stretch out this top piece a little bit. Theoretically, <laughs> that'll be enough to get it to fit over the bottom section. I have a template that fits over the top of the stove and can use that to make the marks or where the burners go. So I have several marks, eight marks around there, and I'll 
adjust them a little bit because it's never exactly right. You know, the template moves around. Next, I use a push pin that I've flattened on one side by rubbing it on some sandpaper. That gives it kind of a drill-like thing, and I'll use that to make marks, and then I'll use some small metric size drill bits to finish off the jets. So there's the push pin. Go to my marks, very carefully line it up, and just twist a little bit. You actually can cut all the way through this aluminum, but I generally don't do that. Okay, done. Okay, time to put these together. Let's see if I can get them to go. Always a little bit of a challenge. There we go. Got it started. So, I'm going to go to the vise. The trick is to find where it's in the least and push in there and rotate it and go back and eventually you can hear <laughs> how it's protesting it's a super tight fit because I only flared the outer edge of the top. Getting close. Okay, it's pretty nice. I'm going to call that done. Because I'm going to be putting one of these little metal tabs on, I did this. That's a, a tiny neonibidibium <laughs> magnet glued on. Pop that on there for storage, and when you're ready to use it, it can go on the top. These come from one of these. It's a metal electrical box get them for a couple of bucks just punch them out and they always have a little rough spot where they're connected just file that down or sand it and you get a nice round piece that can go there and of course you could use a coin but it won't do that I also like to cut a strip of this aluminum uh, duct tape don't use the regular duct tape it's junk and wrap that around that will cover up this edge 
shouldn't be a problem one way or the other. It's not going to leak. This isn't going to make much difference. But it's just kind of an aesthetic thing. I just like to put it on. Now, it's totally done. So that's the build on my new version of the stove. I made these burner jets 1.25 millimeters in diameter, and that's why I think that the burn time is longer than usual and the boil time is longer than usual. So I'm gonna take a chance on it and increase them to 1.35 millimeters that should speed up the boil time and it'll decrease the burn time in total but i think that's okay if we can get a faster boil and still get that 50 percent or so efficiency so i'm going to do that i'll do another test and i'll let you know in a real short video what the results were thanks for watching